Warning, graphic pest control video ahead. Do not watch if you might be offended. If, however, you really like watching pest control videos, then hello again and welcome to the Squirrel Hunter channel. Please continue and watch us as we control pest populations with silenced air rifles here in the UK. If you have any questions, can you please check the description below first to see if it's already been answered and for some useful links. Thank you. I'm out today on my Theoban Rapid 12, out after squirrels, launching Crossman Premiers at them, as I so often have done in the past. Regular viewers of our video will recognise this feeder, but maybe not necessarily the location. It's exactly the same tree, but I've turned it 90 degrees round to the right. I used to look up there to the left of the picture, down towards the feeder, and any time a squirrel hit the ground and kicked to the left, I couldn't see it for the trees. Plus, I couldn't see them on approach, so I've moved it round the tree a bit, changed my firing position. That's the original view I used to have. The feeder would be smack on the side facing you now. You can see I've taken it round to the right. I can see the squirrels coming across the other side of the wood directly towards me now. And if they hit the ground, they won't kick out of sight for a second shot. And that's my new firing position. My two-man pop-up hide. I'm out today. First light. See, it's quite dark. I'm using the sniper cam on the back of my Theoban. It's activated into low light mode. You can see I can see quite well. Bit of a disparity between the two cameras. My normal video camera doesn't pick up very well in the semi-light. The sniper cam sees just fine. It's got a bit lighter now. It's nice to get out before dawn if you can. You can catch the early feeders. All the birds are up and hopefully that's woken a few of the squirrels. Maybe their belly's grumbling, I don't know. But I'm waiting for them. I've taken a test shot it's quite easy to do with a sniper cam. Just aim a bit of rock or something, or stick. See the birds have made it to the feeder. It's an open hopper feeder, which means the birds can have a free feed. And I'm more than happy for these birds to have a feed. Gets the attention of the squirrels. We have been fitting lids to a lot lately, just to make sure that when we see a level drop, we know it's squirrels. This feed has had a bit of a beating over the years, so I must do some work on it at some point. Revamp it a bit, I think. Here we have our first visitor. For a chance to turn the camera on, he came dashing in from the left. He's set up on the feeder now. I set the camera up. I'm reaching for my rifle. I turn the sniper cam on. I'll have to try and pick him up and wait for the opportune moment to take the shot. And there's a sniper cam. I found him and he sat pretty still. I'll take the shot. Hit him straight in the head. Then to the ground he goes. Perfectly good headshot. This is quite normal for brain damage. There's a link in the description detailing why they kick. Front end's all floppy, just the back legs go in. I'm watching him through the scope and I'm happy with the results. No need for a second shot there. It's all over for squirrel one. Nice bit of bird song. It's almost deafening some days. Even though you can't see them, you know they're there. A lot of bird life in this wood. At mid morning they all seem to come foraging around on the floor. You can often hear things like jays and crows both of which, if they sit in front of me, will get shot. They rear pheasants in this wood, and the known egg thieves, and on the pest register. So in this instance, they will be shot. But I'm after these things. Grey squirrels. That is my target for the day. And that's what the feed is for. This one comes in from the left. There's a rather circuitous route. Gives me plenty of time to get the rifle up and ready. I'm poking it at the hide. And he's sat on the ledge. That's the design of a feeder is engineered to get him to do. Sit straight on to me. Click a doom. And I fail miserably to take the shot because I haven't caught the rifle. 
And as I cock it, I see his attention being grabbed by the noise. That's what I want. And I shoot him in the head as the woodpeckers squack away in the background. Onto the floor. As per usual, a bit of kicking. Quite happy with that shot. Reaction looks like a good one for me. No need to shoot him a second time. And the body shuts down. Mr. Robin. Our videos are never the same without one. There are all sorts of birds in the background. Nice time of year this. Oh dear, what's happened to Mr. Pheasant? Thought I'd seen some movement. It's got to be somewhere in a hurry. Hang on, more movement. I think Mr. Squirrel's upset him. This is why I moved this hide. A lot of them come from that direction. I'd like to see them on approach to give me plenty of time to prepare. Well, I'm pretty sure he's coming straight to that feeder. So I'm reaching for the rifle. Oh dear, what's he seen? A dead squirrel. This usually provokes a bit of fat in a bait. But very often, they end up going to the feeder anyway. See Mr. Pheasant ducking at the bottom of the scene there. That one's decided he's hungry still. And there's another pheasant in the background running in. It's the same as the last one. How bizarre. I think he spotted the first pheasant. I reckon that's why the first pheasant was running. It's doing his margy bargy pheasant styly over the far side. The first one was running. So he probably got his bottom kicked by the other one. All these things happen in the wood. Creatures jockeying for position. It's all about territories, food and breeding rights. The squirrel's no different. Wishes for him to get on the feeder. He's come down the tree now. And decides he's going to wander off to the left. This is quite irritating when they do this. Felt certain that was going to rush in and have something to eat. It's almost like he didn't know the feeder was there. Much rather forage on the ground. Off he goes to the left. I really desperately want him to sit still. I'm trying to crane him with a rifle. A vain attempt to get him to stop. No joy at all. He wanders off over to the left. And disappears. I didn't alarm him or frighten him in any way. I only got to hope for him to come back. A sniff of annoyance there. I'll just have to put the rifle back down again. Quite annoying that. There you go, seen some more movement. I'm having a fidget in the hide. And there he is. Might well be the same when coming back in. No, it's decided to go back again. This is really annoying. Seeing some more movement on the other side of the wood, which vindicates my decision to alter the position of this feeder. I only did this yesterday. Last night even. So this is really the first morning they've got to get on this feeder. I'm hoping the ones will just come to the tree and not be too upset the fact it's moved 90 degrees. And so far, they haven't really been upset by it. But I can see them coming now. I've got plenty of chance to prepare for a shot. And this one's going all the right ways. He's jumped up onto the big tree now. He seems to have spotted me. But never mind. I've got him with a sniper cam. Wait for a second. And there he drops to the floor. more like it. Good side on headshot that. Clung to the tree for a second in a muscle spasm then dropped to the ground. You can see the tail flick a little bit. I'm pretty sure I got him good. It's a little bit of a hollow there making it quite difficult to see. 
this will eventually fill it with vegetation which I'll have to cut back if I want to shoot this feeder properly when the weather gets warmer. There's a jay. You hear a couple of them there. I shoot one or two of them in this wood every year. Don't see them that often. You hear them plenty though. Not sure what the argy barge is about this time. They're staying quite close to me. Probably arguing over the feeder moving. A bit smarter than your squirrels, these are. Most of the Corvid family are. Crows, magpies, jackdaws. Quite intelligent compared to squirrels. And quite a difficult air rifle quarry. Jay seems to have disappeared now. And here's the feeder. Only three today. Quite happy with that though. Means I'm keeping on top of the numbers. Right over the eyebrow with that, straight into the brain. Despite the fact it kicked over to there. Turn on with that for a headshot. Another one's gone straight through the side of the head. Actually, it's gone in from the front. Just in front of the eye, and they go back by the ear, so that's gone straight through the brain. This is the one I shot on the side of the tree. It's been quite a while since I shot this one. Also, I wouldn't just touch it immediately. You never know, despite the fact it looks like a good headshot. I've been poking him with a stick. You can feel the skulls pulverised under my finger there. That was the side I shot him on. Pellet went in that side. Straight through. Right behind the eye by the look of it. Not a bad one, considering I only moved it yesterday. Three and the rapid. See the sniper cam sat on the top. Take a few pictures. It's always nice to have a memory. You can see what time of year it is. The snowdrops are coming through. For all you galanthophiles out there, it's always nice to see them. It's usually one of the first signs that winter's on its way out. Anyway, while I was down in that wood, bros at the top, the Zest 410, 2 2 caliber, shooting Webley Power Pals. And see how he gets on. It's a quite a small wood, this. But it's right next to the owner's house. And any squirrels are set up home here. They invariably find their way across the small road and into their garden and their house, start causing all sorts of damage. So if we can keep the numbers down here, it keeps the owners happy. And that's why they invite us onto their land to control the numbers. Because they recognise there is a need to control them. When they breed out of control, they cause all sorts of damage. You can see the lighting levels are raised up a bit. Get a beep of the camera there. The squirrel comes in. And bro's got his scope cam on as well just got to wait for this squirrel as per usual to come down to the feeding ledge sit nice and still there's no rush looks like the squirrel's got a bit of clumsy about him doesn't do to be clumsy when you climb trees it's probably having a look around like I would do if I fell over did it even see me do squirrels even feel embarrassment I have no idea Come back up the stick. It seems to have gone a bit still. Bro's tracking it for a shot. There we go. That would do. He completely missed it. Unlucky. Nims the rubs. Not sure exactly why it happened. Maybe the pellet wandered off a little bit. Maybe there's a bit of head movement. Not a lot of luck going on for Bro today. I had three, he had none. And those figures are very often reversed in his favour. And them's the rubs, I'm afraid. Here's my BSAR 10, 22 caliber. I made it to the same permission on a subsequent week, trying a different rifle out 
on my newly moved feeder, shooting the super hollow points I use for the rats. No sniper cam today. Just looking in the scope. You see the feeder. Nice and dark, first light, as per usual. And the birds twittering away. It's a slight breeze. It's good on this side of the woods, on the lee side of the wood. Wind tends to prevail from the opposite side. It does tend to break it up a bit. It's quite comfortable where I am. And here we go. Got cam wrong because the squirrels come from directly behind me, believe it or not. Memory serves, so I was only there five minutes. And this squirrel rushes past me, straight up for breakfast. I'm lining up on him, ready to take the shot. And a good old wallop from Super Hollow Points. Quite a devastating little pellet. I'm not sure if they mushroom. But they do hit very hard. I do think these hollow points and pellets of the, that ilk tend to tumble on impact, which will obviously give quite a lot of damage as they turn broadside on the way through. There's a few lane kicks off that one. I'm still tracking it with the scope, so I haven't moved the camera. I'm pretty happy with that, I think. Does help sometimes that they kick a little way away. I'll turn the camera on to him, so I must be pretty happy. Just behind that stick. Body's just shutting down. So squirrel one on the ground. It's got nice and light now. All the birds are going for it. The crows, all the songbirds. It's noise from cars, planes. The dog kennel next to the owner of the property that we shoot on. And the dog barking echoes a few hundred metres from the wood where Bro normally shoots. Quite noisy in the woods some days. And while I was sat there listening, I've seen something. This squirrel's wandering from the left. I'm gonna have a look at that one on the floor, I think. Sometimes it is quite handy if we kick away from the feeder. Where's he gone now? There we go. Up on the side of the tree. It sits on the top of the feeder, that's fine. I don't care where they sit still. Still a bit nervous. It's getting closer and closer to the food. So I'll get the rifle ready to take a shot. And there we go. Don't waste any time. As soon as it sat still, we got a shot. And that is about as quick as you'd ever shoot them. No point in shooting them when they're moving. Back legs kicking away, front legs all floppy, and the head. No conscious movement there. And the body soon shuts down. Never felt a thing. Squirrel two on the deck. It's not been long since I moved this feeder. Doesn't seem to have disturbed him at all. It becomes squirrel three. It's come romping straight into the feeder. So it's more like it. Didn't worry about the ones on the ground so much. I'm getting ready with the R10 and line up to take the shot. And he sits nice and still. So I shoot him. He looked like he was looking at me. If they go on alert like that, they tend to sit very still indeed. They can help their evolutionary instincts. If you know what they're likely to do, it's easy to play on them. A bit like kissing a rabbit, or even making a kissing sound at a rabbit to cause it to lift its head. You know they're going to do it. Make it click, or an abrupt sharp noise, and they'll freeze to see what the danger possibly is. They never in their wildest imagination realise it's someone pointing a rifle at them. I'll take that shot. The wood pigeons are woken up now. Let's 
spotted more movement on the side of the wood. Whip the camera on a bit quick. Oh yes, here we go. Another squirrel. Straight up that log. Incidentally, I never put that log there. But I do tend to like to run up them. He's got the back of the tree now. He's going to stick his head out the side. Let's pan back a bit. Just want to get the R10 ready. We're going to have a good look at the ones on the floor. I wouldn't mind knowing if they're making some sort of noise, to be honest. I can't imagine. They just sit there and flick their tails. I know they can vocalise, but I can't hear anything. You just have to wait. they satisfied that the ones on the floor not going to cause them any problem. That's more like it. It's almost like they got Velcro on their feet the way they stick to the trees. With particularly sharp little claws of theirs, very good at gripping. Sitting on top of the feeder. I don't know why they do that. Must know that. He has to be down there to feed. Never mind, I don't care. Let's have a bit of a scratch on them fleas. And have a bite to eat. That's more like it. Take aim and fire. Straight to the ground that one went. The super hollow points. Pretty accurate at 15 yards. A bit of a delayed reaction. Quite clearly see the shot was good. I've obviously put the rifle to one side now so I can wear the camera. Just wait for the body to stop twitching. More like it. There's the view from a hide. The camera to the left. The rifle and sticks. And there's another squirrel. See him to the right. Again coming from that side of the wood. Which was one of the main drivers for moving the feeder. And also moving the shooting position. That and to give myself a lot clearer view of the ground. When I hit the ground. I wouldn't have to leave the hide as I've done in previous videos to double check that the shot was good. Strap that stick again. One feeder we got, the big one, I did the family record on the other year. We put a lot of sticks over because very often we can't see the squirrels approach. But they're quite whippy sticks and as soon as they bounce on them you can see the movement of the stick before you see the squirrel. So act like a bit of an indicator that there's a squirrel approaching. In this instance, you can see them coming from across the wood quite easily. There we go. Let's have a look at the ones on the floor, shall we? Why are you all lying down? I doubt it even thinks that. I think he's more worried about the possible threat. Which is pretty much what you see all the time. Sometimes they'll death them on the floor. I'm not sure if it's seen me now. Definitely get the feeling he's looking straight at me. You can see the one that's dropped just behind the back of that tree. And this one's already shaping up to look like a squirrel that's going to go the way of a lot of them before. It's going to run up to there, sit there quietly feeding, or notice me and go on alert. And I'll be able to take a nice surgical headshot and kill it clean. Anyone who thinks I should be shooting quicker, they really have no respect. It's a vermin animal, but we show them respect by killing them clean. It's not being chased, it's just sat there on a bit of alert. And I shoot it in the head as it does so. 
It wasn't stressed out. I wasn't chasing it. It's quite calm. I've hit it perfectly in the head. Just adjust the camera there. I very often look at the screen. Sometimes difficult to see out the hide. If you check to see if it's breathing or not. But before this one came along, I did make a decision that after the next one I was going to go and pick them up pretty much immediately after. Clear the ground of all the dead squirrels. See if that made any difference to the next one coming in. If I do indeed get another one. So it's from the hide. I'm going to probably at least have an half an hour wait after exiting the hide. That's what we normally reckon on. I'm wearing wellies even though the wood's quite dry. The field I crossed to get to it is pretty boggy. That's been dead a while. Give it a quick poke. Can't be too careful. Once I'm happy they're all dead and not like to bite me, pick the rest of them up. Watch this. Oh, side true Bob. How big are my feet, eh? That sticks a bit of an annoyance, really. First of all, it hid the squirrel from view, and then I nearly break my neck over it. I've got them safely in the hide, and I haven't broke my neck. Put the camera back to where it's supposed to be. The camera's on for a reason. You can see this squirrel approaching from the bottom left-hand corner as the rain comes down. A bit of a pet theory on the rain. If you've seen a previous video, all of a sudden the rain comes down. Not long after that, I end up with four squirrels in the space of five minutes. So I do think a little bit of rain causes them to stop messing about and stop foraging and come for some free food. This one's galloped in. There's nothing on the floor to impede it. So in that respect, speeded up the squirrel on the feeder scenario, which I'm trying to get. It seems to have noticed something, which is fine by me. Sat there looking straight on at me. And the usual result ensues. Squirrel sits on the ground. Very often a pause before some kicking. All depends on the pellet catches them and what damage it does. Their skulls are pretty thin pellet goes through them very often in one side out the other so there's plenty of power there this one's barely moving sometimes those are the ones that aren't the best shots but I do think that was a good one six on the grain for this wood is a very creditable number I'm quite pleased especially the time of year I'm getting on to breeding for long once that starts to happen, the numbers will rocket sharply around about the beginning of June. There'll be a lot more wandering around as the kids leave their mothers and strike out on their own. As per usual, we have a change in UK weather. The sun's come out. Birds have started singing again. I think it might be time to pack up. I'm pleased with the position change. Made it a lot easier for me. I do a bit of bird watching, seeing as the sun's come out. Quite a lot seem to come. A lot of birds twittering around this time of year. I've said it before, there's always a time of optimism. All the animals can feel the warmth. You can tell there's a change in the air. And hopefully, with less squirrels, they'll have an easier time of it. This is the last one I shot. Straight on shot, I do believe. You can see the blood splats on the floor. Despite the fact they kick about, they bleed an awful lot. Blood loss alone would cause them to go unconscious into a faint, and they wouldn't feel anything due to that anyway. Here's the first five. Tucked in the corner we hide, hit the way. Give a little look, inspect the heads. Straight over the top of the eye. Straight over the top of the eye again. Bit of a 
have missed that one. And that one. All pretty much the same spot. Straight into the thick part of the brain, causing the maximum damage possible. That's a straight on shot. When they sit there with their head on their chest feeding, usually works out quite well. There they are, the R10. Topped off with a Hawk Panorama Scope. And there's my pilot kit. I have to lump across the field just to go shoot it. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe and share. Thank you.